Now today's training I am super, super excited about because this is focusing in on making a split image with sublimation. Now, Lauren, I want to say that we are going to make this as beginner friendly as possible. Yes. But there is a caveat here. It's beginner friendly plus yeah. because if you've never sublimated before, this is not so beginner friendly, but this is beginner friendly for someone that understands what sublimation is. Once you understand what sublimation is, you can take that next step and do this process. Right. But if you're here today and you're saying, Tanner, I am brand new. I want to sublimate, but I don't even know what it is and how to do it. This is going to be a few steps above that. So yes, it's beginner friendly for our friends that already sublimate, maybe in our sublimation course, but if you are brand new and do not even know what sublimation is, first, let's talk about that just for a few minutes, and then we're gonna dive in to this amazing split image training, because let me tell you, my friends, for this project, we are focusing in on eight and a half by 11 sheets of sublimation design. A lot of you have chimed in and said to some of our projects, Tanner, I don't have a big 13 by 19 inch printer. What can I do? And this right here is our tried and true proven tutorial teaching you everything you need to know to do split image with eight and a half by 11 car, um, sublimation paper and ink. What I love is that this tutorial is so practical because there's some actual struggle with getting this all lined up, but we have a few quick and easy tips and tricks to turn this from confused to flawless that are going to allow you to get great results just like this. So let's think big picture right now. Other than, um, other than a bath mat, what else could, could I do? Um, an amazing blanket. You could do amazing sweatshirt. You could do, um, the possibilities are truly endless when it comes to sublimation. So let's talk about what sublimation is real quick. If you're familiar with infusible ink, I get the question a lot, Tanner, what is the difference between sublimation and infusible ink? So what infusible ink is, is pretty much printed sublimation sheets, patterns that Cricut design and package for us to cut and use. That is fantastic. What sublimation really is, is giving you the access to print whatever pattern, whatever photo, whatever image you would like. And both of these apply onto polyester material or sublimation blanks, which brings us to our next point. We're giving away a huge value pack of sublimation blanks today. So stay tuned for more information on that. But what it actually is, is you're printing on sublimation paper, you are printing um, sublimation ink. And what happens is when heat is applied to that ink on that paper, you are going to see a chemical reaction of the ink turning into a um, gas and going right into your fabric. That is very different. For example, my t-shirt is screen printed. I cannot sublimate white ink on a black material. This is why screen printing is top of the line or embroidery and things like that, or HTV when it comes to a black t-shirt. Notice here, this is a white blank. White is the secret. Another way to get the workaround here is using fabric that you can bleach. So doing a poly cotton blend, um, which we talk all about in our Makers Gonna Sublimate course, which today is $70 off. Now, my friend, you may be here and saying, Tanner, do I take the course if I don't have a sublimation printer? Yes. Do I take the course if I do not know what sublimation is? Yes. Do I take the course if I have been sublimating for six months? Yes, because what you're getting today is 20 plus training videos, an ebook to give you everything you need to know on how to master sublimation. And on top, this is the icing on the cake, over 200 exclusive designs that you have access to as soon as you say yes to Makers Gonna Sublimate. So Lauren, I feel like I've done a great overview of trying to get people Perfect. caught up to where we're at today. Yes. Let's talk about what you need to do today's project. Now in Makers Gonna Sublimate, we only teach you how to use free programs because we feel like you've already invested your printer, your ink, your blanks. I don't want you to have to turn around and spend more money on software. So my friends, today we're actually using Inkscape. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do this project 
in Inkscape. I want to let you know the value of you showing up for today's training is our Inkscape presentation. This is going to be very thorough, very detailed. I'm going to teach you how to do that um, to take and cut up your image really easily. I'm going to show you the easiest way to size your rectangles, print it out, save it, do it all really. It's very simple. Yeah. Once you've done it once, you truly could do it for any design, any photo, things like that. Inkscape has some unique workarounds, but once you learn those, you are going to excel. So we're super excited for all of you at home. Um, and yes, it is so, so good. I love it, love it, love I've it. I've seen a few friends that have said something about printers. So the printer that you can use an Epson EcoTank is the we one that we use today. We love our Epson EcoTank. Yep. That's um, what we, that is literally what we use today. Right. So yay. And it's not... It is not a special sublimation printer. It is just a regular printer that you put sublimation ink yes, into. Yes, we converted it. Yes. So we converted that. And in our course, we talk about, do I want a sawgrass specific sublimation printer? Do I want to convert one myself? Do I want a 13 by 19? Do I want an eight and a half by 11? We cover all those questions and help walk with you to make that decision for yourself um, and things like that. So we're super excited. Wendy is ready. If you're ready to dive straight into our sublimation training today will you go ahead and drop ready in the comments let's see how many people are truly ready to jump over and dive in we're super excited to be here with you today and we love it is Inkscape a program we have to purchase for our computer Carolyn it is actually an open source free program yes. um, so you do download it to your computer but it's absolutely free so I would Google um, Inkscape for PC or Inkscape for Mac and you'll find the link online yay can you use the first heat press so Carol um lots of Carols today um I recommend the easy press two and up because the original easy press only goes to 360 degrees we're going all the way up to 400 degrees today Lauren yes it's warm yeah yeah <laughs> so you have yeah, to you need you that. do have to get pretty warm with some yes lotion. yes 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 look at all these readies I'm, all right fine. let me get my computer set up right here because we're really excited to dive in now today lauren we are using a file that is um part of our sublimation training so i just want to encourage you if you sign up today for sublimation this file right here you are going to get as part of the sublimation course so instant access today for this i also have more thorough in-depth training of inkscape so today my friend if you go come here you take the training you're like ah i'm kind of hungry for more take the course like take the course because i teach you how to do some really unique things in um inkscape that is specific for our sublimation so let me just pull this out and bring in these other layers before we get to ahead of ourselves here so, so before we get started i'm just going to go ahead while he's setting this up i'm claiming this saying today is a good day for a good day i'm <laughs> Amen. claiming it today I declare it lauren declare yes. it i don't Oof. know about you all but here in Tennessee, the weather has been crazy, and it has all Affected of our, our sinus our sinuses up and down. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. woke up with a headache, but today is a good day yes. claiming it. I love it. So, step one today, what you would need to do if you are opening Inkscape for the first time. Um, first of all, we need to make sure we have the proper setting for our paper. And this right here is what your paper is. So notice there's a lot of things that can be on your mat, but this right here is actually representing um, the size of what you would save. So if you have things on your mat using Inkscape and you export it, you know, even though I have all these other layers, it's only going to export this little square, Lord. Right. So what we need to do to make sure, we'll just start a new one just for ease. We'll go to File, New, and we are going to Inkscape encountered internal error. Okay, so that closed. Uh, this always happens when we're live. I think that's so fun. Um, so we're gonna go right here and we're just gonna search Inkscape and we're gonna open it right back up. So look right here, we have opened Inkscape right back up and it lets us know, you know, if we have any issues, anything like that. We can go to File, Open Recent, and we'll do Bath Mat 4. Uh, okay, so look at that. 
So we are just going to start completely fresh again. So if we go right here to Inkscape, let's open this up. And we're just going to start completely from new so that you guys can follow along with us. We're going to, now that we have our mat, we're going to be on page and we're going to go from units. We are going to go to inches. So this is 8.5 by 11. Okay. So that's eight and a half by 11. That is our piece of cardstock because that's what we're actually printing. Okay, my friends, that is only printing. And yes, our Inkscape sublimation training is included in the sublimation course. Great question. So now next step is we need to come over here and we are going to simply take our cut file today from the zip file and you can just add it right here. So we click yes. And we are going to now size this for the mat. So Lauren, let's go overhead and talk about this just so we can give a visual of what size this needs to be. So our bath mat today, which I was measuring earlier, so I can tell you the size is 15 by 23 inches. Right. So 15 by 23 inches. So what does that automatically tell us? It needs to be smaller than 15 by 23 inches. Right. So I'm going to do roughly 13 by 18 inches will be really good for our bath mat today. So we're going to size our image now to 13 by 18 inches. So that will be really good. So let's hop back over to Inkscape now that we know the size of our image. So once we have it right here, Again, it's going to automatically be in millimeters, anything like that. So make sure you're in inches. And we're going to do the width right here at 18 inches and our height at 13 inches. So let's just press enter and make sure that's good. So here we are. Um, our height is, our width is different. So let's make sure our width is correct. We said our width is going to be image size. 18. Do, do, do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to make sure we have this selected. So see right here, we have this selected at image size. So now once we have that, let's go to our, um, make sure it's in inches. And I'm trying to make sure we have it selected properly. Because sometimes, as you know, Inkscape loves to be a little funny with us. So once we have that selected, you can see the, uh, the numbers change. So if we have it selected, it's 22 by 14. But if I click off of it, it goes back to 8 by 11. Um, so I'm going to just fix this right here real fast, fix it back. You want to make sure that it stays on that eight and a half by 11 yes. where it says page, the page yes. you're printing on. And then look what happens when I click on the layer. It's going to go back to selection right. and we're going to have it proper. So let's go to width and we're going to type in 18 and then we're going to hot and we decided 13 and press enter. So just like that, we are going to stay at 13 inches. So there we go. You can see here it is not wanting to change with us. So I'm going to type in 18 and press enter. And then we're going to go over here and change it. So it's not wanting to automatically go. So I'm just going to try to play around with it. And here up at the top, we can change our, our width as well. Courtney, what are you saying? If you would lock this here oh. and then change this to inches, this is going to be the size here. This over here is for your export area. Love it. Okay. Thank you for correcting me there. So our width now is going to be 18 inches up at the top by um, making sure we know that now it's automatically adjusting it to 11. So if I unlock this now, can I customize it? But it would distort the image, so you'll just keep it. So we're just going to keep it at 11. Right. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this right here, one thing I love about this is actually we were able to convert this to be four layers. So what I mean by that is this is actually going to be four different pieces that we're combining together. 
okay? So what we need to do is we need to grab a square right here. And once we create our rectangle, we are just going to create a rectangle right here. You can you know, make it whatever size you want right now. Um, and then what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to select it. And then we're going to unlock it and type in eight and a half. Eleven. So we're going to do 11 right here. And then we're going to do eight and a half. And then we'll press enter. You had that selected. Too. And I had both of these layers selected. So we're going to go over here and press undo. You want to make sure, do you see how we have both of these layers selected? We're going to go undo. And we're going to click um, right here and make sure we unselect that and we only have this layer selected. So now we still have it unlocked. I wish I could zoom in so you guys could see this a little bit better um, at the unlock because this top bar is very similar to Cricut Design Space. So just be very familiar with that right here, okay? So now at our width, we are going to go um, 11. And then for our height, we are going oh, to. But the other one. I know it moved it again. I know this software is funny. It yeah, is free because it's, it's free. It, this is free, y'all. This is a free program, so I just want you all to understand. We can teach you. We can teach you. It's Illustrator. Illustrator. We can teach <laughs> Illustrator, but I want to make sure that you all understand there is a free version. So yes. you just have to be ready to work a little bit. I mean, honestly, Lauren. Mm -hmm. So now that we have a beautiful square that is eight and a half by eleven, which again did take us a minute to get here yeah it's it's i think it's just one of those things um you have to play around with it once you play around with it which we do but we still have issues with it well sometimes. it just randomly closes on us which is hilarious but, but i mean design space does design space does too so what we're going to do is before i zoom in and we start doing kind of like the harder work we're going to just duplicate this uh, this little eight and a half by 11. So I just double click, I click duplicate, and then you're like, where is it? Lauren, I hate when this does this, and guess where it is? It's just on top. Ta-da! And then we're gonna duplicate again. Ta-da! Where is it? There it is. And then we're gonna duplicate one more time. Okay, here's where we're at. We know what image our amazing um, file is, finally after the debunkle. Um, and now we have our squares. Now, let me tell you a thing I really like about this. So Lauren, look with mm -hmm. me, let me zoom in here. Yep. So I'm purposely intentionally keeping all four of my rectangles where I can pull them in. Yep. I like that. But separate where you can see them. Exactly. So we're gonna start in the top left corner. So I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna bring it down. So I'm setting this up here and that looks good, I think. So now we're gonna drag in our second one. Look what Inkscape is gonna do. Boom, corner to corner. We are looking for a corner to corner lineup. That gives That's me the confidence perfect. to know exactly. So now that we bring in this third one, if you weren't watching with me, come back to me, come on in, we're gonna do this again. So to our yeah. bottom layer, we're gonna drag it and look what it's gonna do. So it's gonna say Pop corner it. to corner, boom. Love that. Now we're gonna come over here. We're going to snap in our fourth one. Boom, corner to corner. I love how it snaps like that. <laughs> it snaps right in, I yes. love that. Now my friends, I'm gonna zoom out. And Lauren, this is where it gets a little tricky. Okay. Okay. So this is where we, if you are multitasking and you're really wanting to learn, get out your pen bring come back to us get out yes. your pen and paper write some notes because yes. i mean it's always option you can go watch the preview of course but... there's something about writing it down uh -huh. this is something about following along with us that we want to make sure everyone is here so if you're here with us listening you know get ready here we go so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate everything four times really only three because mm -hmm. we already have one okay right. so let's select by clicking down just like in design space mm -hmm. dragging over all of our layers are now selected so you can actually see that all layers are selected if you see the little dotted line yes on in, inside in our pink red boxes mm -hmm. you, you can, can see, see that all five 
are yes, selected. Yes, 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 yes. So I love that. So what we'll do is we are going to click, um, double click, and we're going to click copy. And then we can come over here and click double click paste. And then I come over here and click double click paste. And then I'm going to put another one right over here. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to press paste. I'm going to drag this over. All right. Now we have four. So I'm going to zoom out so we can see all four. Okay. That was pretty easy. I think everyone is here. What we have done is we have copy and pasted all of the layers four times. Why you are going to do four layers is you need however many rectangles you have, that is how many layers you need to duplicate. So, so if we you have, have four. An image that has to take up six. You would have six how many duplicates. Times you, you're going to duplicate six times. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. That is a great. Just remember that if you're definitely a note taker like Arlene, definitely make a note of that. Just yes. note that right there, my friends. Okay. So what we will do now is another interesting part. I'm going to start. Um, oh, Carol says, how is Tanner zooming in and out? So all you do is take your two fingers on your trackpad. If you're on a Mac. If you're on a Mac and zoom in and then zoom out. Go to camera one and show them like just your fingers. Okay, yes, yes. This so zoom is, in. If you're on a, if you're on a this Mac. This would be zoom out. This would be zoom in. Yeah. Zoom out, zoom in. Okay, go back. We're okay. going back. To but I have, another, I have another thing to show you. So over here in the bottom right corner, if you're not using a Mac and you may have only a, um, like a regular mouse, look right here. You can press this over in the bottom right hand corner. And that it has a Z and it has the um, percentage. I could just zoom in right like this. So if you have windows, you're going to way. the bottom corner and yeah. just manually zooming in and, and then out. look, you can use this bar to move it over and things. So either way, that's a great one. I love being able to explain everything for everyone. That's a great tip. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do now is for each one, we only now need one square per layer. So we're going to select, we're going to leave this top left square and I'm going to delete the top right square. I'm going to delete the top bottom square. I'm the going to bottom, the, not yeah, the, the top bottom. bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deleting any other square. Yes. That is step one. Now I'm coming over here to my second one and I'm deleting the top one. I'm deleting this one. And the way you delete a layer is you take your mouse, make sure it's on your cursor tool. The cursor tool looks just like your mouse. You would select it from the left toolbar. You would then take that, select your layer, and you press delete. Or backspace for Or windows. backspace, yeah, either button. That's yep. a great tip too. So now here's what we're looking like. Let me zoom out a little. So this is what we're looking like. Looks a little, like, what are we doing? You're getting confused. I totally understand. So now, but you've got to trust the process. So again, delete this one, delete this one, You're delete late. this one, okay. and then this one, we're going to delete this one, this one, and this one. All right. So if you are a note taker, I would recommend to actually screenshot this mat right here. Yes. So just take a picture of your screen, take a picture here, because now what we have done is we have made sure, Lauren, that these rectangles are precisely positioned. Mm -hmm. They are perfectly laid out mm -hmm. and it's gonna be very easy. All right, guys, very easy for this part of the process. So now that you're here, what we're going to do is we're now going to select both layers. So I'm actually going to zoom in right here to this and I'm going to select both of these layers. Okay. So drag. So yeah, you can see the rectangle around it. And when uh -huh. I release my mouse, it gives me that outline again, which right. I love. So we are actually going to go up at the top and this will be the same for PC as well. Um, and we're going to select object. Once we have select object, come down here to clip and we are going to click set. 
Now again, if you are a screen taking note taker like myself, screenshot this real quick. Just screenshot it so you don't forget where it is, okay? You're not gonna forget where it is. I want you to remember this and make sure you take it in. Becky says, this is great. I've never used this program before. Becky, we know a lot of you have not, so we wanna make sure it's thorough, we're on point, mm -hmm. and it is really great. So now that we're on clip set, we are going to click set. Look at that. I didn't even have to delete out my extra layers. It did it for you. Thank you, Inkscape. Thank yes. you, Inkscape. Yes. So Catherine says, do not think this newbie is ready for sublimation. So Catherine, I did give a disclaimer earlier that this is not a beginner sublimation tutorial if you do not know what sublimation is. This is for our friends that are using sublimation and still feel like a beginner, but they know what sublimation is. They have a printer and things like that. If you are still so new to sublimation, you're not sure what it is and how to do it, I would recommend getting the course and walking with us from step one. This is something just so many people have asked for that I wanna make sure we hit home today in this training. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna repeat this step three more times. And I'm gonna walk with you for each layer so that you all can really get it. So let's hop back over and we're gonna go just layer by layer, Lauren. I mean, this really isn't that hard. Like, I, I mean, once you understand um, what sublimation is, um, this program is a lot, I mean, it's a lot, obviously a lot different than Design Space. Yes. But any other, um, whether it be, now obviously Illustrator is a lot better, but as far as the way that it is set up, yeah it still looks similar. And that's why I don't ever discourage someone starting on Inkscape. Because it's free. It is free, and what Lauren is saying is so true, you, the skills and the tools are almost in the same place. Right. So you're not going to do yourself a discredit by starting an in Inkscape. No. Not at all. And, not and at it'll all. make you feel, once you are ready to take the next step and actually pay for a program, it's yes. not going to make you feel so overwhelmed that you just quit. You just correct, leave it alone. Correct, correct. And here at boot camp, like, let me, I, I wanted to make sure a lot of these projects were wowing this time around mm -hmm. as they always, you know, definitely are. Um, but instead of just teaching some basics, we wanted to make sure we elevate y'all in a really great way. So just stick with us. We are gonna walk real slow. And again, we are just gonna select both of these layers. We're going to, see one thing, unlike Design Space, Lauren, if you notice, it didn't select both today because I didn't go wide All enough. All the way out. If you go just like inside, which still touches the layer, it doesn't You have think, to go all the way to the corner. Yeah, all the way. It has to fully go in. But now I see that. And we can go to object. Once again, take a screenshot if you did not while ago. Yes, object, object click, clip, set. set. Or write that on your notes. Yeah, write object, that down. Object, arrow, clip, arrow, yes. set. Yes. So down here, look, we'll do it again together. We gotta select both of these big and wide. Look at that. Now we're going to click object, clip, and set. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So click it. Boom. So basically what this is, it's similar to the slice tool. It is. In Cricut Design Space. Yes, we're, we're slicing We're slicing. Out. This is what we're doing. We are slicing. I love that. Okay. Object, clip, and set. Object, clip, and set. All right, y'all. We've made it. We, we made it. We are here. Y'all did it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is bring all these in and we're going to talk about next steps. Okay. So next steps are pretty fun. And this is why we have not gotten rid of this little white rectangle. Correct. 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 So we actually are going to now press shift. And I need to rotate this image. Um, can I do it this way? Ta -da! Look at that. There's a rotate button. Yep. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Can you, okay. Can you rotate the white piece of paper? So I actually could, I would just change the settings, um, a little bit 
I would, I would just change the height and the, yeah. the width, which is fine. I can just show the rotating. So this right here um, is very easy. We're just going to set this up. You got real close on that finger. I did get really close on this. Oh, my word. I, I use like every square. You you did. Yeah. So that would be <laughs> that would be so, something great to talk about. Right. And there's with this specific design something that you all could do that I noticed, but I didn't want to interrupt. I know I noticed it too. I should have lining up with the different colors on the lines <gasps> Ooh, would have made it I think maybe made it a little easier. I love that. I love that. So now that we've got it right here, you've set it up on the mat. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna change where it says file name. We're going to change this and we're going to title it um, Bath Mat Tanner 1. So April asks, what does the white rectangle represent? That represents Our piece your of paper. piece of paper. Yes. So your piece of paper is right there. Yes, you do want to start from the beginning if you are just now tuning in for the first time. Okay. Yes. Um, go back, scroll back watch later e either way like we love it um so now we would click export or we could click export as if we click export as we can pick exactly where we're gonna put it so we're gonna put it in say documents we're gonna save it as a png please save that as a png my friends um so now that we know it's a png we are gonna click save and we're gonna click save so there you go. Now you're gonna move this one out off of the mat because that represents our watt. Right, so it is basically just saving what is inside that watt. Yes, so now we rotate this over, drag it down. Okay, so just moving this over, dragging it down just like so. Position it right here because this is how it will print. We're going to now go ahead and move it from bath mat one to bath mat two. Now we will select export as and we are going to leave it bath mat two under documents as a PNG. A so we've PNG, had people ask what a PNG is and why save it as a PNG. So it's a portable network graphic and PNG is like industry standard right. when it comes to you know digital images and things like that. A sub sublimation paper, we love it. So like when you are saving a, a picture that you've taken, you save it normally as a JPEG because that yes. is the industry standard for a photo. Yes. But this when you are more... printing a graphic, yes, you're wanting exactly. to save it as a PNG, which is the portable network graphic. Yes. So look at that, Lauren, save. And then I'm gonna open all these for you here in a moment so you can visually see what happens. Um, don't worry, like I totally am gonna go do that. And then I'm just gonna scroll over here, find our next layer, drag it over, look. Don't even have to flip this one. Ta-da. And then we're going to unselect, and we're gonna move from bath mat two to bath mat three, and we're gonna select export as. Again, portable network graphic. Direct so documents. the Same. reason we are doing export as instead of export is because when we do export as, I we, gotta know know where it's going. We, we know exactly where it's going and we know exactly what format it is going. Exactly. Because it says PNG, but I really just want to know where, where this files go end up, y'all. And then look, this is our fourth layer. Super easy. So we're going to change that from three. We're going to change that to four and we're going to click export as. And there we go and save. Now, Lauren, let's go over to the fonder and we're going to go down here to um, wherever. It's Courtney's. in recent. It's right there. Oh, perfect. No, that's not the that right was one. Courtney's. Mm -hmm. So normally computers have documents, just but cool. Courtney's is special. I would just do a search. Let's see here. I did top in Tanner. Oh, here we, well, I want to find documents. So documents. Let's see if I can find this folder. That is so funny. Look at all these files. Courtney, come on. So if I type in Tanner, 
All right. And where is my bath mat at? Dun, 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 dun. So let's just pretend, I guess, if I cannot find where these have saved to. I need to find her documents. Just so everyone knows, Tanner is using Courtney's computer <laughs> right now, and her computer is set up different. It's so crazy how you get so used to what you're doing on your own computer and then moving over to someone else's. Why don't you just try resaving it again and see if we can like save it under the... Um... You know what? What if I just search for the file? Bath mat dash Tanner. Look at this. Do, do, do. Let me search this Mac. Ta -da, and I found there we it. go. So we're just gonna select all four and we're gonna open these up. And then here is how our images have been saved. So look at this. So what we've got right here is we have our files and you can go through and you can see all four of our layers. So this is what it saved as y'all. Is this not so interesting mm -hmm. that this is how it, all four have saved? And now here's another, here's another reason why you need the course, because let me go ahead and let me share with you why you need the course. So let's go back to the main camera. After you have exported your images, there's actually a few other steps that you need to take. You need to have what I personally love to do is sublimation is set up the printer driver for my specific Epson onto the computer. That's what I love to do. I love to automatically set it as a preset to know that I need to mirror it, that I have the best image quality set, that I know what color codes I want to use. There's a few extra steps that you can take and set it up once, and then it's gonna automatically know every single time you do it. I don't have enough time in today's training because today we're focused in on splitting the image up but if you take the course, if you say yes today, you're saving $70, I'll teach you how to set up your printer driver and pick your favorite settings and preview and things like that, that we have done. And it's gonna be awesome. Like yes. it is gonna be absolutely fantastic. So does everyone understand? And I know if you tuned in even five minutes after I did the setting up the watt square yeah. originally, Inkscape is very different than other programs. So whatever is on your watt piece of your watt rectangle, your watt square, this represents your eight and a half by 11 sheet. So that's why after we had been able to clip set that um, and take those images, bring it in, export it, that's why it looks like it does here in preview. So what you would do next is you would actually make sure to have that mirrored because this is like HTV. You're going to fold, put it down and then look at it this way. So that has to be always be mirrored. That's very important. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. Make sure it's on great printer settings. Make sure to set up your sublimation printer correctly. Again, it's all outlined in the course. I'll, I'll never be able to make a YouTube video as thorough as the course. There's reasons why you invest in programs like that. So I just want to encourage you, you will save the amount of money you invest in the program and just saving you time, energy, and money. Right, okay. Now what you would do is you would go through and print this out. And here is what it will print as. So you can see, if we wanna go overhead now, we can go overhead, that will be really good. <clears throat> so we already have printed this out for, I mean, yes. because it took us a little while to get it printed. Now, when you're using the Eco Tanks, Lauren, just like yesterday's project, uh -huh. buckle up. Yep. Like, just slow down, to take a yep. walk. This is what we're going to do. So you'll have your four layers. We're going to actually do a task using two different elements. I have a paper trimmer and I have a pair of scissors. We need to, for most of these layers, trim here and trim here. Now, I want to give you a little piece of advice. The ink is right here. Lauren, the ink is right here. Mm -hmm. If I scratch this, yes. I'm gonna be able to see it. You have to be careful. This is a careful Tom. Careful Tom. There's other paper trimmers you could use to, to protect better. But we're not about that and i'm going to show you we used we had a great result this is my great result right here that we used with this paper trimmer that was less than 12 dollars uh -huh. so you can do that today right here and we love it 
Um, after sell on sublimation, can we still do a split payment? Cheryl, I'm not sure if we're continuing payment plans into 2022. I cannot confirm or deny. So that's a great question. And we use free Canva. It's awesome. Um, Pro Canva is even better, but you know, whichever one you want to use. So, I do think with Canva, if you plan on using background remover, I think you have to go pro. Yes, the background remover is there, but you don't need it in every no, sublimation you don't need instance. It, no, not at all. And the only reason I say that is because with that with the sublimation um, project that I did over Christmas. Oh, did you get to use the I, background remover tool? I had to use Ooh. the background remover tool, yes. I love that. So now I'm just trimming this out, and I just want you to see that why I like this paper trimmer is like I'm cutting down here and then I can stop it and say okay is the line you know close enough is the line too much I can go through and cut that right here and then you can see now I have my I have one squared perfectly and it doesn't you know it didn't scratch any of that so I just want to let you all know there's no scratching the ink and things like that when if you're careful so we're just going to repeat that to our other layers Oh, if you did not know about scratching the ink, like that's why they don't recommend you to touch it. Mm -hmm. And like if there's debris on your sh paper, like a piece of glitter or something, mm -hmm. you have to get that off too. So, so it's very important where you place your fingers. Um, Notice I'm being very careful. very cautious um, for when you are cutting this, and this yes. is very important with if you are having to piece things together. Yeah, for sure. So we are just being careful lining this up. Ava, no, Canva is, can be used with uh, Windows. That's actually how I taught myself. So I was a Windows user um, up until I started working <laughs> with Maker's Gonna Learn. And we like, threw I've you been, a mat. I've been a Windows user um, since I was, uh, I mean, in middle school. Like yeah. I've only ever used Windows. Um, so me learning Mac has been completely different, but it is, it's, compatible with both softwares yes there's a iphone app and a what desktop so yes. either way and the iphone app is like um and i love it yeah it's i really love cool. it it's very neat so say here look at this so you can see i didn't perfectly do it this is when i take my pair of scissors and get in here and like make sure i you know trim this out just a hair a hair here and a hair there. So Belle says um, rip so you don't have harsh lines. I actually tried that on my other one and it worked so like really, really good. With this, obviously you can't rip, but like if you right. end up sublimating and you see that you are having like harsh lines around your edges, it, it really depends on what you press it on and sublimate on. But I have had, there have been projects where I see people have the harsh lines around yeah. where the paper is. And that rip worked for me. I, I love that. One of our members suggested, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. try it. And it I worked because because the first one I did, it did have the harsh lines, and Ooh. then I ripped it. It was Good. great. I love that. I love that we learn. You all are here, and it's like you all are here to learn from us, but we learn from you all oh, just as yeah. much. Yeah, that is so true. So notice that we just took those edges, we trimmed them precisely off. Like we just taped it around. And now what we're going to do, here's what we're gonna do now, y'all. Here's what we're gonna do now. So let's move our paper trimmer. Now you take your four layers that you've got here. Here go, you know, kind of set this up. Oh, do I need to cut one more? I think I need, I need to cut this edge. I need to cut yeah. this edge right here. <laughs> got too busy talking, you know me. Um, so we're gonna fix this one right here. Love it. And then look, I need to chomp off this T so we can go right here. Love that. Okay. It's a very, very complex. Not complex, but it's like a it's tedious. A yeah. Tedious. That's the word. But, but Lauren, I feel like a lot of our friends here really. Love oh, I tedious. love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, they love the tediousness. Okay, so this is backwards. It's so. nope. The, the top yep, of the fingers go. go on top of the hand. I was like, where <laughs> am I going wrong here? Your fingers go on top of the hand. I was getting my colors, like I was following the colors rather than the, yeah. um, rather than anything else. So I'm taking just some of this excess off, making sure it's all cleaned up. Okay. 
Okay, so taking all the debris away, and then we're about to sublimate. So once you have it lined up here, you just line Look it up. Look how perfect that goes together. Right? It's crazy. I wish we could snap in real life like Inkscape snaps together. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing, Lauren. You need to invent it. Yeah, I know. Yes, I mean, you can play around with Inkscape. Rosalie asked, can someone play around in Inkscape without having a subprinter to practice? Yes. Absolutely. The, that would be better. Mm -hmm. Like, do that. Play around with your different programmings. Make different things. Um, or not, I mean, just play around with it before getting that to see if yes. it's going to be right for you. Um, for I, sure. Please I mean, sublimation that. is absolutely amazing. But I'm not going to sit here and say that it's, right it is like perfect thing for everybody correct, correct you correct. find your niche and you get good at that yes 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 okay so we've taped these two together lauren uh-huh now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna tape these two together look at that look at perfect. that. perfect and it's no. another very important thing you do not tape over your ink yes tape notice in I'm between not, yes please do that please 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 be careful Okay, so I'm just going to line this up here, making sure it's all lined up. Cindy asked, um, she says she's driving and she's not supposed to be watching videos, but she's not. <laughs> um, but she's listening. She's asked, but do you teach how to do this in your sublimation class? If you do, sign me up. I'm all in. We do teach you this and so much more in our sublimation class. Yes, you're going to learn. And this so is also things. something you can rewatch once you're done driving. Yes, please rewatch this because it's such a great one. Um, there's so much more that we teach in the class too. Like, yes. like there's so many more like, um, cornerstone pieces of the tutorial that you need uh -huh. of like how we got this image to print exactly how the image was. I think a lot of people's number one concern here is getting great print quality. So right. print quality is number one when you're in this game because there's a lot of possibilities to go wrong and things like that. So you want to be very careful. So yes, we are using heat tape for those who yes. have been asking. Yeah. Oh, this is my heat resistant tape. This is the secret weapon to sublimation. Uh -huh. This is the secret weapon of putting the puzzle back together like Wendy just said. And it's just slow and tedious. And I think a lot of you will have a lot of fun with this. Look at this. Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm loving it. I know, I'm but you're it. you're wow. I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> I love this. Yes, classes never expire. Once you um, have purchased access, a course, friend. lifetime access. Love that. Lifetime access, and the and that's even even with our um, cut files. If you are a member, or if you are wanting to become a member, or on the fence about becoming a member. Um, one, and you download one of our cut files, if you decide, you know, you've been a member with us for, you know, a couple years or whatever, and for some reason, maybe you got out of cricketing or maybe it just wasn't in the Your cards for lot, you a that lot of year. people's job changes, you know, job yeah. shifts for time period, things like that. But you get to keep those cut files that you download. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that is the good part. And uh, the difference with our membership and a lot of other memberships. Yes, a lot. Cricket Access, you lose, literally lose access to your files once you cancel. Um, yes, Tammy. In the same way with Netflix and things like that. Too. Once you purchase the course, you, you will have access to it, I mean, whenever, yes. all the time. Yes, it is. So once you that. purchase so the sublimation course, even if you aren't a member, you still have access to that sublimation oh, yeah. course. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I either need to trim down this piece over here or... Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Uh, mm. So correct me if I'm wrong, but our tape dispenser, we just spray painted, right? Because uh, we some... did do that, yes. Yeah, this is just a... Did we get it from Walmart or somewhere? Um, I believe Amazon. I so this is, we, we just ordered, this is just a t regular or a, a tape dispenser and we didn't like the um, the color of it. Yeah, it was very like businessy. So uh, we spray painted it. Yeah. Just like we're, <laughs> we spray painted the handles of our totes that we're yes. using because we didn't like the color of them. So we yes. spray painted them pink. That is true, that is true. <laughs> okay. 
So this is where you can get a little bit more particular with tape if you feel like you need to um, and things like that. You do have to be able to pick this up and lay it down. So you wanna make sure that you can move it around. So like, I really think I wanna put a piece of tape right here and see if it'll fit, but it might not. So what I'm gonna do is cut this down a little, cut this down just a hair. And I'm gonna take this little bitty piece and then what I'm gonna do. Oh, Courtney just dropped the link to the dispenser for yay, you all. Thanks, Court. Look at that. I've added another little piece of tape. That's very helpful. You can add another piece if you want. Um, Lauren, is there any questions about this process? I feel like it's easier. It's an easier scene than like tried to talk through. Yes. So, how, someone, how do we? How do? I guess you line up image to iron it on this so what we're doing is we're using heat resistant tape to tape all of these yeah we use an eight and a half by 11 paper mm -hmm. um and we did this because a lot of our friends do have the smaller printers and we wanted to show you all how to yes. piece together a large image with a smaller printer exactly so we are taping it and piecing it together <clears throat> with heat resistant tape yes so now what you can do so now Lauren, we get to decide do we want to use this one or, so we had our team prep this one and we ended up taking this from six layers down to four. Yes, um, because so this it is was... the one we prepped. So which one do we want to use today? I don't I know. I say we do the one we've been doing. Uh, okay. I mean, it, it, they both look amazing. So right. the next step is I like to, so what Lauren was talking about was kind of taking these edges and ripping them. Yes. Um, I'm just going to cut them because we cut these and you can't tell. And there's some, some material. Yes. Can you explain there's some material? What material? There, I think t a lot of people have issues with t-shirts. Yeah. That are there certain t-shirt materials when that you use end that up heat having, press. yeah, that end up having the harsh lines, um, which the one that the material that I use is actually, I didn't use it for this sublimation to stay on, the sublimation ink to stay on there anyway. Right. So the harsh lines really didn't matter. I just wanted to see if it worked. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, no, the ripping, I, I, like I said, a lot of people have issues with the t-shirt, but this bath mat is padded. Yes. So now it doesn't, reason... it's not so hard on it. Mm -hmm. So we haven't had any issues with the harsh lines on it yet. No, let's talk about the reason why I'm taping or why I'm cutting. I want to get a great placement, Lauren. And sometimes when uh -huh. I don't have a good outline, I won't be able to place it properly. But a lot of friends are gonna be like, oh, just go ahead and place it down. No, it is not time to place this image yet. It is not. What we have to do now is the next step of our process is make sure our heat press is on and we have to prepare our bath mat. So we're gonna grab our lint roller today. I'm going to just go ahead and lint roll this. Just go ahead and lint roll this real good. Oh, somebody asked, and I don't know that we, it was about the butcher paper, so that's going to be a really good, it's an important step. Um, oh, we're about there. We're about to yes. butcher paper, Tom. But she said that she went to go buy butcher's paper, Ooh. and they only had the pink butcher's paper, and she wasn't sure if the pink would transfer during the heating process. I don't think it would, but I wouldn't would. think we've not ever we've had, never, we've never, never ran seen. into that issue. I, guys, I've been using the, I'm about, I'm almost out. I'm almost out of my butcher's paper. Is that not crazy? No, nope, we're on one. <laughs> I'm almost out of my butcher's paper. Can y'all believe that? Can y'all believe that? Listen, um, I mean, it might have to be something we test out. We might have to. So I just went ahead, lint rolled this bad boy. Okay. We are preheating our easy press, so we do have a second to take a little, a little Q and A. I'm gonna make sure. So we did have a friend while you're doing that asking why is it mirrored. So the reason that we are. When we do sublimation, it has to be mirrored is because we turn it upside down yep. to transfer it onto our blank. Yes. So that's why, just like with heat transfer vinyl, yes. you have to mirror your heat transfer vinyl. We are mirroring this because it is going to be turned upside down and placed on top of our blank before exactly. we heat it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, so we'll just place this down right here and we're just gonna position it. Make sure we're super, super happy with it. So a lot of our sublimation blanks that we find are on Amazon. Yeah, and, and not all sublimation blank companies are made the same. So just be mindful of the reviews, read them very thoroughly, uh, make sure you've got great, you know, make sure there's some great reviews to support you, you know what I mean? Right. 
And there was another question. Um, what is the sublimation spray that some people use? So that is just, a, and you, why don't you go ahead and explain what that is? So let's talk about sublimation spray because it is such a hot topic here at our office and with crafters across the world. And we just had someone say, have you tried sublimation spray for cotton? <laughs> so that is actually available in our course. I compare three different ways to sublimate cotton and this results are very surprising. I want to just encourage you to take the training. Um, but the exact question was, are they asking what it is and have I tried it? I have tried the insulation spray. I've tried the spray for you. It's not my favorite. Um, there are ways to make it great, um, but mm -hmm. it is additional steps. There's more tri there's more trial and error for sure. Um, getting it to dry, how many layers, things like that. Um, but that will allow you to sublimate on cotton. But we have some really unique workarounds today that you can actually do um, to sublimate on cotton. So again, you might want to question, you know, do I want to sublimate on cotton? I don't recommend sublimating on cotton near as much as I would a sublimation blank and things like that. So yeah. Cheryl says the spray was not great for me. Yeah, if you lower your expectation, which I never like to do, uh -huh. um, you can do it. But why would we lower such it's a high possible. expectation? It's possible. Okay, so we're gonna take this right here. Butcher's paper always on top, as you all know. This will be four hits. This will be four hits right here. So we're just gonna hit heat this four times. Um, following pretty much the same corners and we're gonna be very careful so we're gonna start down here in the bottom right we're doing 60 seconds per corner and it's very important that you do not move like once you this has been done pressing and you do need to apply pressure yes. just pick it straight up don't scoot it because I've, yeah. ha I've had, there's been issues <laughs> pick it straight up yep. and then move it and yep. drop back down Yep, yep, yep. Um, if you, oh, yay, thanks, Charlotte. Will the sublimation on the bath mat fade after use and washing? No. No. No, 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 not at all. No. Not at all. So, you love it. Um, have you sublimated on vinyl so it can be put on darker items? Carolyn, so yes, I have sublimated on vinyl, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Why would we sublimate on something then Put it, sublim if we sublimate on, thank you, Sin. Yeah, I we, just, it's it's in like very <laughs> tiny letters it's on okay. here. If we, so here's the question. If we're gonna sublimate on vinyl, and then we have already decided that the vinyl is not gonna be near as permanent, I run into a question I ask myself, why are we doing it? Like, you know what I'm saying, Lauren? Yeah. Why would we, then we would run into the same issue of mm -hmm. just putting regular heat transfer vinyl. Now there are projects that you're gonna say, Tanner, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine with, you know, risking the vinyl. Right. Because I can have my own pattern. Right. And things like that. So that's fine. But I like to ask myself. No, the ink too. will not come off on your feet when wet, not at all. No. 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 So, so what sublimation, if you've missed, um, he, if you missed Tanner's kind of exp explanation about what sublimation, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a mouthful, yes. about what it is. So the ink, when it is, when you use that heat press and it heats it up and it does have to be at a fairly high heat, 400 degrees. 400 degrees is top. And yes. I mean, it's a lot. So you ha it turns that ink into a chemical or into a gas. Yes. And then that gas adheres to the fibers, um, like the poly fibers, any of those poly rayon blend, um, not cotton it has to be a synthetic fiber yes and yes, that yes. adheres to those synthetic fibers yes yes yes, yes and yes. then it stays and it doesn't love go it. anywhere love it love it love it is butcher's paper comparable to freezer paper no butcher's paper is in its own area yes this will not work with parchment this will not work with freezer so freezer and parchment have like a waxy layer on them yeah you cannot use that now lauren you were you were you were raised i feel like very different than me please answer me this did our families me and lauren grew up very close together which will be a yes. story for one day yes we'll um, have to tell you all that story <laughs> we grew up so close together so close together yet didn't know each other yet so far away until i started working with you i mean i knew of you yeah same um but okay back to the question so is people really supposed to use butcher's paper to like wrap up meat like i feel like that's something like if someone killed a deer oh yeah i've mean, had We've had, I've taken, we've taken plenty of beefs to a uh, yeah. packing house and they, we've come back with them wrapped in butcher's, butcher's paper, paper and masking tape. Oh! Yeah. 
Okay, I thought my mamma would have used it. Yeah. I figured. Good to know. But I mean, anymore, they don't do that anymore. A lot of it is now uh, vacuum seal. Yeah, vacuum. vacuum. Seal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Sublimate on wood on top of polyacrylic. Any safe hacks? Thinking corn, corn hole, hole boards. boards. That's what, yeah. <gasps> I want to make a sublimation corn on hole. wood cornhole board. Um, hey, and we can even. If you all are not afraid to use power tools, like we could even teach you. We, we have taught them how to build their own before. On their own cornhole boards? Yes. At a summit. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. <gasps> dun, 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 let's, dun, dun. let's go back overhead so we're we can let it see the cool big reveal. I'm going to let it cool for a second. I'm going to peek it because I need to see first. Yeah. I need to see first. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, 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 ooh. This looks really good. So we've had people, um, can you sublimate on wood? Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. So yes, 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 you can sublimate on wood. It is amazing. I love the look of it. It's very good. You're going to love it. Y'all look at this. Look at this. I mean, look at this. Like, so you can see the line here but it goes away and then you can see the oh i mean all of this looks see this is the good thing so with good. this with like the bath mat where it is fuzzy you it's it looks like you'll have those harsh lines but it'll go away and i guess that's with t-shirts you but don't have that don't fuzziness have that. to let yeah. that go away no, 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 no. so ripping it around the edges yeah. really so helps i just like to get the this tape off here too oh um, carol says how about desktop size cornhole boards <laughs> that would be so fun. Yes. I love that. Okay, I'm just going to get this other piece of tape off. Um, but yeah, both of these are super easy, guys. Like, you can totally do this. Why is this not wanting to come off? That is beyond me. Um, I'll worry about it later. And then look at that. So that came off. So look at these. Both turned out absolutely amazing. We have two that, I mean, look, Lauren, look at I know. this. I mean, wow. Wow. Yep. So this was a line. Like, there was... Where's the edge? Where's the edge here? I mean, not. We don't have um, one. You can see a little tiny line. This is good. That's, look at, that was flawless. I was very worried about this square. It uh, really No, it, it turned out great. The lines there. I'm trying to point out the lines so, like, you can find them. But even, let's see if we can find any here. Looks like there was one, one here, but very mild. I mean, both of these turned out so good. What do you guys think? What... I mean, honestly, is this something you need to do? Like, imagine this on a blanket. Imagine doing your own bath mat. I could put, you know, imagine putting some scripture on here. Whatever you want. Like, you mm -hmm. could do something really fun. I would also do, like, just a big, you know, quote. Like, that would be really fun. There's so many great possibilities to be able to sublimate and rock a split image. Like, this is, this is the training. This is the... The hard part was the software, the fun yep. part was sublimating. The hard yep. part was software, fun part was sublimating. You know what I mean, uh -huh. my friends? Oh my goodness. Anyways, let's go ahead, jump into, it's not a tutorial today. We're just doing like a, I don't know. We, we've been really liking to do like, not experimental live streams, but what would you even call it? Just like, this is how we do stuff. This is yeah. how you work around things. Kind of like a behind the scenes. It's yeah. we're, we're live streaming, but it's showing you how we work, what we do, and then hopefully teaching you all along the way mm -hmm. new things that um, you can do and things like that. Right. Um, I am on the Canva website. Now, we have Canva Pro, which is like the paid version of Canva. It's only, I want to say like $10. I have it personally because... I design like all of my daughter's birthday signs and like I love graphic designing so I pay for the Canva version. If you're a craft seller, you should probably also be paying for Canva Pro just to get access to all of the features. Um, but let's just go ahead. I'm just going to create a blank design. So I'm going to go up here to create a design. Then down here I can put a custom size in. You can change this to inches. I mean we can do like a just a 20 by 20 page it doesn't matter I'm just going to be showing you all the features and then we're going to select create new design so this is just going to give us a blank canvas to work with now I'm going to pull in some of our makers going to learn sublimation files if you have the sublimation course we have added 
a few new files, a few, I say a few, I mean a hundred, um, and we are going to be adding more, but this is just some of the files that we have already. Um, I have them pulled up. They're so cute. You can see them from far away. I wish I could, I could make this bigger, but that doesn't do anything, does it? Let's see if we can make them bigger. Um, oh, there we go. So Perfect. these are these are in our sublimation course. These files look how cute. Are they? These are our new ones. Yeah, these are our new ones. Yeah. Look how fun, y'all. I love these. So these are only these are exclusive to our sublimation people. Now I want to use this football helmet. Where did he go? I had him pulled up here. That's that was a, back toward the other way. Here it is. There it is. This is the one I want to use today. So I'm just gonna click and drag this into Canva. You can see you can just drop your files to upload and it's just gonna pop right in to our document. Super easy. A lot of people don't even know that you can do that, that you can dra drag and drop your image right uh -huh. into Canva. Um, otherwise, if you wanted to upload it, you could come over here to uploads, go to upload files and just find it on your computer. So this is the image we're gonna be working with today. Now. Something that happens a lot is you're like, oh, I love that image. I want to use it, but like there's no words on it. I want to add text to my design. Like I want it to say, go Trojans or go, that's my high school, go Vols. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoever you want. Let's just type in a random name. We'll say go Vols because uh, the Vols are playing this weekend. I guess everybody, everybody in the... Yep. Everybody is doing football. This College weekend. football kickoff. College football. I love those shirts that are like, I just hope everyone has a good time. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> that's me in a football game. I'd love foot like I love the environment of football, but like, do I always know what's going on? No, I don't. And then what you can do is just select a font. I'm gonna select this just like basic square font right here. Actually. Let's do now. One thing that I do want to talk about with you guys, Canva has a lot of great free fonts. Yes, okay? lots. Oh, I'm I'm gonna give a give a timeout real quick. Megan said my high school mascot was the quote irrigator. Irrigator. <laughs> <laughs> like. Like, like it was a gator, like an but like irrigation, irrigation. Like an irrigation. That is the most country said, oh, thing. Farm I, country. That is country. I love it. Me too. I'm obsessed. My mom's was the boiler makers. Boiler makers. The boilers. Boiler, boiler makers. makers. Mm. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> they make hot water. I don't know. I have no. It was like a little man. If you guys have a funny high school, I'm we changing, were the Indians. I'm changing this. To the irrigators go yes. irrigators <laughs> i wish that we had an alligator to go on this i would totally use it i swear go irrigators i need to change the font though okay here we go this is cute what and y'all this is not necessarily what i would actually design it i'm just i want to give you guys a good base to work with so football helmet go irrigators five six it makes me want to be cheering. Erica says a boiler maker is a drink. Well, <sighs> that sounds like my kind of mascot right there. I don't want to say <laughs> high school mascot, but that sounds like my kind of mascot. But like the drink's probably named after something, correct? Like I would think the, the drink is named after I would something. think so. Oh my gosh, who, who freaking knows? Okay, so we've got our text on here. Now what I want to show you all this is something that um, they did not always have in Canva. So I want this text to really pop off of my shirt. So obviously if we're doing it on a white t-shirt, but we want it to have like an outline around it in our team colors, what you could do, say this brown and orange were our team colors, you can actually add an outline in those colors. So let's go to effects. You've got to make sure to have your text selected. And then we're going to add an outline. So this is like not brand new feature, but it's semi new, I would say. Um, and then you're going to actually be able to put in you a hex code or pick your color or use the color picker. So what you can do is just browse over like if we wanted this burnt orange color and you can see here now it's going to outline that in the exact color. No, 
sliding this around, trying to guess which one is exactly, you can use that color picker and select it directly. Now, I want to preface this by saying I pay for Canva Pro and I was on my laptop trying to do this under my personal account and I did not have the color picker tool. And I guarantee if some of y'all get onto your Canva, you will not have the color picker tool. I don't know what they just like how they're deciding it. I don't know if they're trying to work it out of the system. Have you had issues anywhere with it? What? The color picker tool. It's not on all the Canvas. And I don't know if it's like, because I pay for pro access personally. And you don't and I have, don't have it? it on my computer. Okay. So the workaround, if you if it is for some reason, if it's a pro um, feature, which normally they tell you, it'll say, it'll have that little crown on yes. the bottom if it is a pro feature. So, but if it's not a pro feature, y'all, you can get on Google Chrome and do a Chrome extension. Oh. And if you search for a color picker Chrome extension, I have a workaround. You can get that the Chrome, ex, the, the extensions for your web browser, like Google Chrome, for example. I've said Google Chrome 12 times at this point. Sorry, my That's bad. Okay. And it um, just goes up here. So you can just it. And it goes at the it. top. So you can pick and figure out what hex code anything is on mm -hmm. and type that hex code in. Well, so that's a great way to do it, especially if you use Google Chrome a lot. My workaround, and you went into detail on that in another video. I'm trying to think of what video that was. You it's showed a Maker You Sophomore Year video. Um, but you did but it on also, a sticker video I did randomly. I did a sticker video of talking about hex codes yeah. and co picking your colors and using a free extension for color pickers. Well, so this is what I have done. And I'll link this website for you all beneath um, the video. What you're going to be able to do on this website, it's called Red Ketchup. Um, I don't Red ketchup? I don't know. Ketchup? I don't know. <laughs> the, the names of things today are really on another level. Do you remember green ketchup? I do remember green ketchup. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Random nostalgic moment. <laughs> um, so anyways, you get onto this red ketchup website. I linked it because I was like, they're going to be like, what in the world? And you go to browse and then you can just select your recent download. Of course, mine is not in there. Let me pull up my finder. We can click and drag this image in here as well. And I want to show you all what happens down here. So. Right now, there's no pixel selected. What I need to do is hover over this helmet. I'm going to select right here in this little orange area. And look, it gives me the pixel color. It gives me my hex code. I can just literally hit Command C or Control C to copy and then go back into Canva. And if I wanted to outline my helmet doing the same technique, I can do that. So select your image, go to Shadows outline and look here's my color i'm gonna hit command v to paste it in and it adds that and you can do the same thing with the text so like if you wanted to do the outline of the text with that same exact hex code you can go and plug it in here which we already we already did it so easy ways just to kind of make your designs a little bit more elevated i would say and there's only certain instances where you need to do this like you don't need to go in and add a colored outline to every single sublimation design because i showed you how to do it mm -hmm. and because you know how to do it it's not going to look good with everything so that's just the way that you can kind of like make it pop off of the shirt and also tie the image to the text now if you wanted to you can change the color of the text as well like if you just wanted to change it to another color or whatever you can still go in and change all that um but i just wanted to show you all if you wanted to add an outline so what i was going to say earlier before we got distracted with irrigators and boiler makers and everything <laughs> else is that you can so canva has a lot of really really good um they have a lot of good text that you can get and use with the free version. Uh -huh. However, you can upload your very own text if you do have the paid version. Yes. So you can upload Maker's Gonna Learn fonts mm -hmm. and use them in Canva if you have the paid version. Speaking of the paid version, you definitely, definitely want to check to make sure that you could possibly get Canva Pro for free. Yes, I'm if pretty you're a sure teacher. students get it for free. Teachers get it for free. Mm -hmm. um, if you are um, associated with a nonprofit organization, you get it for free. 
That's pretty good to of, know. There's a lot of different different avenues you can go to get Canva Pro for free. Just, yeah. just FYI. So Bev says on the free version, I just checked the color for the hex code is there. So the color picker is there. So I don't know what the deal is because you guys, can, like I'm telling you, I researched this for like two days. I mean, not two days straight, but like, I was like, I don't understand why I don't have a color picker on my Cricut X or on my Canva Pro. Like, I don't get it. And there's a like lot of articles. There was an article from like March of this year and it was like, even though Canva doesn't have the color picker tool anymore. And I was like, what? I was like, I no, because if I'm in our account, it works. But if I'm in my own account, it wasn't working. So I want to show you all another way that you can get custom color palettes based off of the images that you're using. So I'm going to use a different image because this image only has a couple, like two or three colors. Let's go to, I put a link below for you all. This is a Canva source and it's called a color palette generator. And what it does is it takes an image and I'm going to go over here. I linked it below for you all so you can go straight to it. You can try demo image. I'm just going to select try demo image. And you can see this is a sunflower picture. But look, it gave us all these four dominant colors that are inside of the image. Let me just, I'll upload one of ours. Why not? Let me go back to our finder. And let's select an image. This one has, well... I want to do something with like some depth here. Maybe this. Oh yeah, this will be good. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag, upload my image, and then it's going to give me different options. Now, I don't know what these names are. We're just here for the hex codes. Okay, my pink. I don't, that's a weird name. Potter's clay, Farah, and then just straight up black. So it pulls colors out of the images that you're using. I don't love that color palette with that. You want me to be honest with you? Let's pick a new one. <laughs> Let's pick these little, mm, maybe this sunflower. Let's see what it does when we do this one. Okay, so it gives us brown, this golden color, a sand color, and black. What you can do is just select like this Dixie color. I can hit copy. And then when I come over here, if I was wanting to change the color of my outline, could just go back to effects, click on that color, click on this little rainbow icon and hit command V. That's going to paste it in there. And you can see here that it changed the outline of our text to that golden yellow color. So that's pretty cool too. I mean, this is just like an extra feature. And look, if you're like never sure what colors go well together, you can even explore different color combinations in here, which I love because I feel like it's hard sometimes to decide which one you want. You know what I'm saying? Lauren, what are you doing? Over I'm there? looking to see if I have the color picker, which I don't, but now I'm looking in trying to figure out if I even have Canva Pro. I know I have Canva Pro because it comes out of my bank account every month and I see it. So that's why I'm like, what in the world? But even they said they had it, they had free and it should be on there. So that's why I'm like, what decides if you get it or not? Or is, is it a secret club? Like, do I not know? Anyway, so another thing that you can do is just select these color palettes. If you wanted to, to um, let's just type in sunflower and see what it gives us. You can type in keywords and just type in sunflower, hit enter. And then look, it gives you like four different options for color palettes. So this is fun. And like I was saying before, these images that we have in our sublimation course are ready to go. They're ready to be used right away. But it's nice if you want to add your own elements and to help your design process, it's going to make everything look really cohesive and pretty. So, so we do have, um, I, we do have Jackie said, which, hi Jackie, not seeing you here in a minute. Hi Jackie. Welcome back. <laughs> um, I feel like I need to learn Canva now because she said she creates a design space, prints to PDF, and then prints in Inkscape. I really think that if, if nothing else, get you a free Canva mm -hmm. account and play around with it. Yes. And then that way, if you like the free version of Canva, mm -hmm. then you're really going to love the paid version of Canva. Yes. And just so we're just so y'all know, we're not paid by Canva. We just really love Canva. No, we literally love it. I, I, I create stuff on my phone a lot with Canva. Like, like if you are, if you sell your crafts, 
creating graphics in Canva, mm-hmm. like to post on your social medias. For emails, for little signs at craft shows. Like yeah. you can just make everything. And they have so many pre-made templates and stuff like that, which is really nice. Um, but so that's, these are just like some little tips. I know we're going over lots of like colors and things like that. Um, but other things that you can do with sublimation in Canva, there's so, there's so much. There's really is so much. I really want to encourage you all to kind of get in there and play around. Um, you can use like their basic elements to kind of add stuff in the background and yada yada, but we won't go super into that just because I want to focus on sublimation. Um, one thing that I really like to talk about is your print settings when you're printing from Canva for sublimation. You don't just want to print any image. And what I mean by that is whenever we go to save, we'll just say this image specifically. Whenever you want to save something, you go up here to this little share icon and you're going to go to download it. Okay. Now it's going to bring up all of these file types. What I love about Canva is that it's got all the file types and what they're best for. So you can see right here, PDF print is best for printing. If we're wanting to print a sublimation quality, high quality, the best quality print, we're going to always want to save this as our PDF print. Now you can see it'll say like this is suggested, suggested, but that's not what we're using it for. We're using it for printing. So I'm going to save that as a PDF print. And then not only that, but when you're selecting your color profile, you can see right here, RGB is best for digital use, but we are going to be doing professional printing. So we're going to want to do CMYK. Now, if you do a lot of sublimation settings, you can save your download settings and it'll just automatically do this if you predominantly use Canva for printing sublimation designs. And then you can just hit download. And so then, we also had somebody ask, is Canva better than Illustrator? I have Illustrator. Would I rather use Canva? If you know Illustrator and you use Illustrator, I would stick with Illustrator. Yeah. Just because you have, correct me if I'm wrong, but with Illustrator, you have the option to create SVGs, correct? Oh, yeah. So you have endless options. With endless options with Illustrator. Illustrator is very, much more complex, but like if you can do it, just stick to it. Just stick with Illustrator. Yeah, but Canva Canva's good because it's very streamlined and very easy, especially for like people just beginning to get into design work mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's it's just easier to navigate. Illustrator can be so hard to navigate sometimes. So um is there any easy way to make earring and can cooler templates? Um in Canva to create a template? Uh, no, but they have they have templates. Let's let's go look at that. Let's see. I think they are under yeah. And you can search. I've I've done this with a t-shirt before. Let's look at t-shirts. You can the one good thing about Canva is you can create mock-ups in Canva. Yes, and that's something that we should talk about too, especially with sublimation, because if you have like lots of designs in your brain and you're like I want to sell like five or six designs for my fall release. I want to do five football designs, but you're like, I don't want to waste five t-shirts and like in hopes that someone will purchase one. Um, this is a good way to do like a mock-up, which this isn't the prettiest. This one isn't, but they, they have, have photos other ones. that look like actual t-shirts. Right. Like, let's just go to search t-shirts and elements. Here's the graphics right here. Like here, let's delete this one. He's not cute at all. Look, this is a straight up t-shirt, y'all. I mean, it looks like a t-shirt. And then I want to show you all something else while we're here. I'm trying to click down here on my images. This is something that Canva has started doing as well that I love. Select an image, go to position, and look, they have a layers panel. I'm going to pull that to the back. And then now I can even select, I want that helmet. I wonder if I can select two at a time. Yes, I can. I'm going to select helmet, hold the shift key down and select go irrigators. And we're going to pull this up and then size it up and look. And now you have a mock-up. There's your mock-up. And that looks straight up like a t-shirt, like you've already made it. Now you you can even list it on Etsy without even, once you have your design, Yeah, you can take that, remove the background, list it on Etsy. Yeah, you can even add, you can even literally add a background. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you guys. Let's pick your background. Let's do something. 
Let's position that in the back. I mean, it's not the best background. We'll turn on the opacity. Uh, I'd say do a darker background. Uh, yeah, I, th I think you're right. This is fun. Okay. I was just trying to do something simple, you guys. Okay. Let's position it to the back. Bring it back, bring it back. There you go. That's fun. You have an Isti Lessing. Isti Lessing. You have an Isti Lessing. <laughs> Words are so hard sometimes. <laughs> That's actually kind of cute. Go irrigators. <laughs> that is cute. <laughs> Anyways, y'all are cracking me up today. Okay. Um, what about tumblers and mugs? They have templates for everything. I'm telling y'all, Canva is like the go-to. Let's just type in mug template. You can just go up here, look, go irrigators. You could even have it on your coffee. I mean, you just can't beat it. Let's move the mug back. Now, as far as templates, um, like if you were actually, I don't know if you're wanting like a template to how big you would size it or right. stuff like that. That is, we actually have a video on, um, you did the mock-ups, how to create color changing butterfly one where you typed in the dimensions yeah. of your, of your cup. It was a tapered online labels, .com. online labels.com. Yes. And it will give you the actual dimensions. That could be a whole nother video. That will be a whole, will need to be a whole nother video. We might add that to the sublimation course. Yes. Um, but anyway, so that kind of shows you if you are a sublimation seller, how you can create your mock-ups in Canva. Um, but also, I believe in the DMS course or Inner Circle, if you're a part of Inner Circle, Sadie and I like teamed up. And Sadie took all these. Sadie took all these photos of mock-ups. So like mock-up branded images. So like blank canvases, blank T-shirts, blank mugs, and then you can actually add the images in Canva using those mock-ups. So if you're a part of the DMS inner circle, you actually have access to all those mock-ups images. And they're very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have access to that, you can use Canva and get them this way. So pretty easy way for you all to like make your own listings. After you created something like this, if we're on the share screen, like if you wanted to sell this mug on your Etsy shop, you would just need to go to share. And then obviously you're gonna need to download it. And when you're making things for like online and stuff, PNG is probably the best bet. Um, and then you can download it from there and then upload it to your Etsy shop. Good. I'm telling y'all, don't sleep on Canva when you're creating mm -hmm. graphics, whether it be a Instagram story, a Facebook post, mock-ups for what you want to do. Right. And this is not just for, really, we've gone kind of, I don't want to say off script but a little bit off script yeah this is not just for sublimation people this is I for agree. if you're cricketing if you're crafting with your cricket you can do this mm -hmm. you can do your mock-ups there are so many ways that you can use canva absolutely so really and truly like it's great for sublimation right for sure but it's also great for just our just normal cricket crafters yeah so does anybody i mean those are like the main things that we use when it comes to sublimation hacks. I know this is like not a very long live, so I just want to make sure like, is there anything that you can think of that you would um, want to show? The only thing <clears throat> is like, I would talk about the other elements that you can use when you're doing text to add um, like the drop shadows and oh, yeah. things like that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to actually remove this ex these extra elements right here. Um, so <clears throat> what Lauren's talking about is there are other effects besides the outline. That's just one of the newer ones. Um, but there are so many different effects in Canva that you can use. Now, obviously over here, they have these like pre-made font combinations, which are amazing. But if you're wanting to use one of your Makers Gonna Learn fonts or just like a custom font that you like, you can select your font and go to effects, which is where we found our outline. And you can use these other features as well. So these also work great for designing. I love this splice one. We use this one in our thumbnails a lot for Maker's Gonna Learn. 
I'm going to change the color of the text just so y'all can see it better. So you can see, you can change the text, you can change all of that, and then you can even do like, this one's called a lift, um, and you can change the intensity. There's a shadow. I love this one. I'll change that color so y'all can see better. And it changes the color of the shadow. How cute is that? And you can even adjust things like the transparency of it and stuff like that. The blur, if you don't want it to be so obvious, you can see the offset changes. So there's lots of different options here. You can this curve. one, yeah, the curve one is really one of my favorites probably mm -hmm. because like now I can butt my design up and I can nestle this little football helmet right inside of here oh i hate when i do that okay and then you can nestle this and then we can select them both size them up and like how cute so the curve feature is a really good one that one i feel like people use that a lot it's very like trendy um and so yeah you can also adjust the curve if you don't want it to be so curved you can just do it a little bit you can go the other way bring it to the bottom yeah you can also another thing you can do is you can um create your own so if you have i know we've talked a lot about sublimation if mm -hmm. you have the sublimation course then you have pre-made templates for like mug templates and mm -hmm. things like that that you can drag and drop pictures in yes did you all know you can create your own in canva like go to elements okay elements um go to grids grids okay go to view all right there at the where the, all those those scenes right there uh-huh see that all one grids. see all and there you can choose one that you might like so click on that one get rid of the go irrigators for a minute oh no okay now click on that okay and if you well the whole thing okay and then size it how big well just watch what it does I don't <laughs> oh here we go here we go you can you can stretch it and make it to fit whatever you want oh. so keep now resize it again okay now stretch it out to the right see what I mean uh, oh okay yeah so you can have your design set for the size and length of your mug. So let's say your mug is five inches tall and this is just like off the top of my head, five inches tall okay. and eight inches around. You can make that five inches tall and eight inches around and then drag and drop pictures in it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Eight by five, let me zoom in. And then you can, hold on a second. Okay, so we're here, uh -huh. and then we've got our uploads. Um, let's pull in a picture of me, and yep. a picture of Tanner, and a picture of Lauren. And then you can click on those individual pictures and move them around to fit in that grid. Wow, ain't that Did you learn cute? something today? We should put that on a mug. I know. <laughs> How cute. Now, yeah. Sonia asked, can you wave the lettering? In Canva, you actually can't. There's not, I don't know that there is a way to warp text. I mean, it, there may be, and I just don't know it yet. Let me show you what I would do. I'm just gonna show you what I think of. Let's do hello there. This is kind of like that Photopea tutorial we did way uh -huh. back when. If I wanted to do, are you talking about like waving it like this? You could do something like this, right? Yeah, I mean, you could do the wave like that, but I think they're mainly talking about like the warp. You know how you can, oh, like one part of the it, letter mm -hmm. is, one part of the word is up here and then warp it down. You can do that for free in Photopea. I had a tutorial on our website or on our channel and it got taken off. Who took it off? We had like double posted a video one day and we pulled one. But then I have a video about where, oh, yeah. where Cricut, the new Cricut Warp, there was a warp mm -hmm. feature in Cricut Design Space. 
So I talked about that when that came out, but you can also go on that tutorial and I'll show you how you can use Photopea for free to warp your text. And then you can put it in Canva and print it from Canva to sublimate. Yes. Now mirroring, um, someone was asking about mirroring and like maybe I'm just crazy, but I can never ever, it's either I can't remember how to mirror or I do it wrong every time. But what I typically do when I save an image to sublimate on from Canva, let me show you guys this football image that we saved. Let's go to recents. I cannot see. Okay, downloads. Well, of course now I cannot find it. Hold on. I'm giving 2.5 people. What did I save it as? Go Vols? What was it? The football helmet we saved. Here it is. Let me just show you this PDF right here. We'll open it. So you should be able to reflect the image before you print it. Um, if you're using like an Epson Sure Color, obviously you don't need to do it. It will mirror your image for you. But you can also flip it in Canva. Well, that's what I was saying. I don't remember how I do it. You Every time I forget how I do so it. So go to an image. Like just this one. Yeah, go to... Um, Hold on, I have to look. I have to literally, Position, is that, no. I do this every time, I can never remember. It's like in the most Actually, click on the individual place. image. Okay, like just you. Zoom in and click on the individual image. Let's go, this, okay. Here, I'll click me. And then it says flip at the top. That's what you do, you just flip it. Okay. That's it. That's how you would mirror any image, you just flip. You just have to select, so like I couldn't so select you can't, the whole thing. That's you can't, why I can't mirror get it. a text. See, that's the problem. That's my issue. That's why I always get confused. You can't mirror text, which yeah. obviously is the main thing you need to mirror. Right. Um, in Canva, you can't flip text. You can flip images. So there are a couple ways around it. You can either mirror it when you go to print it, flip it uh, horizontally, flip it whatever. You mirror it when you go to print it, or you download it as a PDF reload upload it into canva and then flip the image yes which is such a pain which is a pain i'll show you what she's saying so we saved that pdf earlier okay we y'all remember we said that i'm going to delete all this we saved the go irrigators with the football hammer earlier and it's not mirrored but we need it to be so what you're going to need to do is go to so you have to download it yeah we're going to upload the file to our image or to our canva yeah Okay. So now it is there. Well, give it a second. She, she's loading. Is she loading? I'm just going to click and drag, drag it and in. drop. Okay. So once it pops up, you can select the image and mirror it that way. Because now it is an image with a text that mm -hmm. can be flipped. But like I said, texts cannot be flipped individually. And actually, Lauren, I don't know if it's even going to let us. Did you download it as a, P a PDF? Try it as a JPEG. Yeah, so you may have to, let's just delete this out. Let me. Um, I'd put it back in there. And then resave it as a JPEG. Yeah. Okay, downloading. So let's see if this works. So we're gonna save it as a JPEG and then pull the whole thing back in. So this is gonna give us more of like a flattened image. Yes. Rather than a layered image. Right. So we can delete it because this is the PDF. Uh-huh. Let's go to Finder and I wanna pull in the JPEG this time. So we're gonna pull that in. And you can already see there's only one bounding box. Yep. So like I can't just click on the helmet or the words. Uh-huh. And then I can just hit flip. flip. There you go. And then print it. And then you'll, well, you'll have to save it again. Yeah, you do have print. to resave it. So that's not the most convenient thing to do. But that is a good workaround for whenever you're trying to print. And it's so funny because, like, these are a lot of things that we do all the time. But I do them and don't think about doing them. And then when we go to teach you all, I'm like, oh, yeah, we do that all the time. Yep. <laughs> you are here because we are making a sublimation sweatshirt. And we are so excited because y'all, we are using one of the new, one of the new files, right? 
No, this is actually an old pile. Ooh, an oldie but a goodie. An oldie but a goodie. This one's so fun. We're gonna show you all the new ones. Oh my goodness, yes. Let's go over here, and I just wanna show you the, the sweatshirt. So this is a Hanes sweatshirt. This is um, from their Lux collection. Now the reason that we chose It feels this one, luxurious. It <laughs> feels so good, but it's very hard to find sweatshirts yeah. that have the higher polyester count. Yes. Normally it's about a 60 cotton, 40 polyester, but this Lux collection, Ooh. I'm pretty sure is a 60 poly, 40 <gasps> cotton. And it not only, you know, does it feel good, it has so much, like it looks good, it feels good, and just so that we can confirm this, again, this is the Hanes Lux Collection. It is a 65% polyester, 35% so 35. 35 cotton. And I think if you're looking for, if you're someone that does not like polyester, but you want to get like vibrancy and like get a lot of good color in your project, um, I, I really like this. Like, yeah. it's a perfect meet in the middle on quality. Now you can quality. still find a 50-50. Yes. Yes, but what you're gonna see here is the more polyester you get, it just gives more fibers for that ink to absorb. So you're go get, and in this, the greens, I think the greens get to show off the quality mm -hmm. um, really well. So let's talk about sublimation real quick, y'all, because there might be some new friends. Sublimation, believe it or not, does not require a Cricut whatsoever. Did you hear me? Let me say it again. Sublimation does not require Cricut whatsoever. So you're gonna be able to sublimate um, just with a sublimation ready printer. For most of us, it is not going to be helpful to convert an inkjet printer to a sublimation printer. Um, those cannot be like interchangeable and compatible, things like that. We recommend you to get a new printer, ideally, in an ideal world. In an ideal world, yes. To get a new printer and kick it off with sublimation ink. Sublimation ink is going to be ink that is made for sublimation, and when you print something out on sublimation paper, you will come over here to a heat source, and you will be able to convert it um, and have that ink turn into permanency through the sublimation process. The sublimation process is simply taking that ink turning into a gas and absorbing into the polyester fibers. So when you're making sweatshirts, which is why I love sublimation, I feel like we're missing a bunch of supplies on the table, but you need your sublimation design. We'll talk about how we got to here, because it's really easy. You need your design printed out to the size you would like, which is important, and you need your sweatshirt and heat your source. heating source. We're yeah. not using any heat resistant tape today. We're not using anything crazy. It's really, really simple. Um, and we're super, super excited for this. So could you use a different color than white? So let's talk about the biggest drawback about sublimation. The biggest drawback for me is most of your blanks have to be a light color. So light grays, whites work best. Um, if I wanted to do black, I can't sublimate white onto a black shirt like this, okay? So that is really um, a big thing to note. You want to be aware of that. The lighter color fabric will get better looks. What the sublimation community has done is they've actually taught us and you know we've developed ways to bleach t-shirts so that we can use color but in the area we're sublimating it, it becomes white you know enough to where we can sublimate and get a great look um but yes so all we're gonna do is we're going to take a design today and we're going to actually use canva so if you are wanting to use um canva today you will want to create a design and I always like to start with the size that my printer allows me to do. So the biggest drawback and the biggest thing that I hear from people um, is that they wish they got a large format printer. The price point between a regular eight and a half by 11 printer and a large format printer is, I mean, the price point's really big. Like it's a, it's a jump. So a lot of us want to start with just an eight and a half by 11 printer and make it really, you know, start there. But what happens is 
after you spend, let's say, $220, $250, you don't want to have to go and spend upwards of $400, $500 on a new printer because you just paid for this one. So let's talk about a few of the reasons why you would want to go ahead and do a large format printer out of the gate. A few reasons would be a lot of larger sweatshirts. This one's really neat because you can do it with your 8.5 by 11 one, so I'm excited about that. Um, but what you want to be aware of is a lot of tumblers, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of the tumblers you need a little bit larger than an 8.5 by 11. Actually, the 20 ounce skinny tumblers you can do 8.5 by 11. So that's perfect. So skinny tumblers are good. We use large format a lot for blankets. Mm -hmm. What are other projects that are so specific for the large format? Because I think you, you can get a lot away with a lot with a regular printer. You can get away with a lot with a regular printer. Um, if you are doing larger sweatshirts, so yeah. me personally, I like a super oversized sweatshirt and I like a very large design on an oversized sweatshirt. Yeah. So for, so a for example, of, this is a small. Mm -hmm. it, I, I didn't realize that. I thought this yeah. was like a medium. So this no, is a small. That's a small. So when you want to get into oversized, when you want to get into larger, um, larger anything, you're going to see how beneficial it would be to have a large format printer. So just be mm -hmm. um, just be mindful of that and different things like that. Um, can you bleach a black or dark forest green sweatshirt? So do you want to talk about the heathering and all you, that? It doesn't matter. You can if you want to. Oh, okay. So a lot of sweatshirts, you just want to be careful and you actually want to look for the heathered. So you have to have more than lot. What you have to do is you have to have a heathered yes. shirt for it to bleach white. Yes. Otherwise, when you bleach a shirt or a sweatshirt, so if you had a black sweatshirt and you bleached it, what's gonna happen is that black is going to turn like orangey, Orange. red. It's not gonna look it's appealing. Not, it's not very <laughs> nice. Um, if you have a purple, it's gonna turn pink. If you have um, a red and you bleach it, it, that red is gonna run. It has to be a heathered shirt, and then what happens is that color in the areas that you bleach just turn completely white. Yeah, and it's really, it's super, super neat. So I think you'll really enjoy being able to just look out for the heathered. I, that's the best way. There are some really cool ways to bleach and contain it to the area yes. of your project. So for example, making sure it doesn't bleed all out. You can tape it off. You can be really strategic. It's like painting. Um, so you would put like cardboard in between the shirt mm -hmm. and then you would like tape off like with painter's tape the, you know, wherever the blank is going. So for us, it would be like the square. So you would, you would tape off all of this and then you wouldn't go in with sprays. A lot of videos will show you just like spraying. You would actually go in with like a paintbrush and be really um, diligent around the corners so that when you did a shirt like this, you could get the best of both worlds, the sublimation quality with meeting the bleach and things like that. So just be mindful of that. Um, today, I will say it is best to start out sublimating on just white fabrics, and then you can go from there. So let's hop back over to the share screen because I want to show you in Canva, you can do custom sizes. So we're doing an eight and a half by 11 custom size due to the fact that this right here is um, the largest size that we have available for us to print. So you can see we have an untitled one right here. We just created that. Um, and then you can, similar to the Cricut upload area, you can see we have a bunch of images uploaded here. Um, so you can go through and see what images you want. You can also, you know, when you download the 100 files, you're going to see as well, um, we have all of them. So. Here are some that we're choosing today. And, you know, we have birthday boy. We have when you're dead inside, but it's the holiday season. That's, That's what me. we're going to use today. That's my favorite. <laughs> you have meowy Christmas. This girl loves Christmas. This guy loves Christmas. Um, too lit to quit. Wow. That one's my second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all of these are super fun. And... They're great just to do, you know, a simple sweatshirt, just so that you can be, um, you know, holiday. You know, you can be all of um, festive, but it's really simple to make. So that's super fun. I will say um, you will be getting Canva training 
as part of Maker's Going to Sublimate. Yeah. So if you're in Maker's Going to Sublimate, we teach you in depth how to really use this software to your advantage. And one thing, there's a couple things that I want to touch on. So Tina made a good point. And for those that do not know, if you are in the education field, yes. you can get Canva Pro for free. No way. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Shut the front door. If you are in the <laughs> education field, that's part of uh, the Canva Canva is, they are they, so sweet. They we give love back. Them. But you do have to go through a process of like, putting in, like, entering in your credentials. Right. And they'll go through and, like, I guess kind of, like, make sure, like, you're telling the truth. Yeah. Um, but you can get Canva Pro for free if you are in the education field. Love that. We also did have a little couple questions about Heather's material. <gasps> yes. So let's just let's really, talk quick, about it. really quickly talk about Heather's material. Heather's material is a color effect that is created by mixing two different fibers, multiple different fibers, fibers and colors of yarn. So yes. what happens is, say if you have a green, it's going to be a green mixed with white. So right. it's going to have like speckles of white, and that's how you can tell if it's heathered. Yes. Also, look at your tags. Um, the heathered material is not a solid color, so it's not dyed after the shirt is made. Yeah. A lot of Hanes shirts or any other mm -hmm. shirts, they make their shirts white and then dye them. This yes. is a mixture of white and different colored yarns yes. to make the fibers to make the shirt. So if you head over here, I, I just searched Heather sweatshirt, and you can kind of look at what Lauren's talking about. Like Free Loom has it. Amazon Essentials has it. Um, this one right here is a great indicator for me that it's Heathered because you can see, you can physically see the white yes. in this. And it's more of a muted color. It's very muted, um, and it, it you can just tell, like when you look at this, it's not solid red, There there's lines of white. Right. Um, so that's really cool. You could see, like this one doesn't look as heathered, so you just wanna double check. Um, how I would double check is utilize, you know, some the of this. The description. Utilize the description. Um, again, the tags when you're at a store um, will be a lot easier to tell. Um, I will say Hanes does a great job at describing that. Um, you can see this one has this one's heathered as well, so you can see kind of like the lines of the different fibers um, and whatnot. So, yes, you just want to kind of look for more of, of heathered looks, and that's, you know, such a fun one that you'll be able to, to do. So, now that you have your design set up, let me share with you how easy it is to drag and drop your file. So, we'll drag and drop the one we're using today, which is this little skeleton, and then look. So remember, we're trying to make this as large as possible because we have plenty of room on our sweatshirt. So we're just going to drag it. You can kind of just position it here in the middle. And then y'all, is that, I mean, that's, that's pretty it. much it. Like, no, I, that, that, I, I, this that's is, not pretty much. This that's is it. it. <laughs> so let me just give you a run through on what we would do from here. So we've already printed ours out on sublimation paper, but let me just share with you my official few steps so that you know exactly what we do here. So I like to download it. Um, I want to make sure I'm using PNG. It's a suggested export format. Um, it is honestly one of my favorites for printing. Um, you can do PDFs if you want, but PNG is my favorite. So we'll click download. It's going to download the file. So you can see here whatever you had it named. So for example, I could rename it up here in this area. I'll just say sweatshirt um, Christmas. So whatever you had named it here is what it'll export. So we'll just open this file now and you will now go to file and you can go to print. Now before we go, there's a few different ways to get to the same result. If you want, you can actually go ahead and um, flip this right here under tools. So you could flip um, wrong, I clicked the wrong button. Um, you could actually go ahead and flip this if you want. You can just flip it. And now we do not have to um, worry about flipping it when we are in our print area. Sometimes with our printers, and especially with the Epson Sure Color, it automatically flips our image with our driver, which is incredible, um, and we love it. So let's talk about that real quick. So under print, you'll see, um, you'll want to select the printer you're using. 
Um, I believe the one that we have set up here and we're using a lot is this Epson and the Epson do to do to do. Um, let's see here. So yeah, we'll just go with this Epson. We have quite a few printers because we like to test them. We're using US letter paper size. If you're using a large format printer, you can see we actually can manage custom sizes and we talk about that in the program, um, which is awesome. And then I like to go ahead and sometimes go from preview to, you know, you can look at your colors and see if it's, if we're using Epson colors or their colors, you know, whatever um, you would prefer. So while Tanner is on the color matching, yeah. one thing, if, if by chance you have an Epson Sure color or you are planning on getting an Epson Sure color for sublimation, um, which just so you guys know, basically what the Sure color is, it's an eco tank that is already set up for sublimation. Love it. Literally take it out of the box and plug it in and add yeah. your inks. It's it's amazing. Yes. Um, but the color that what is it the Epson color matching and the color sync. Yeah. So the Epson color matching, if you have one, is going to give you a little bit of a deeper color, right. and which is what I have already printed this one in is with the Epson color mm -hmm. matching. If you are doing sublimation with people's like images of people, like pictures that you have yes. taken, you need to do the color sync. Otherwise, your skin tones are going to come out really off. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So you can do an automatic color sync. This is really cool. If you're whatever, um, whatever ink that you marry to, and again, y'all, at the Maker's Gonna Sublimate course, I talk about like marrying an ink. There's not one that I recommend over another, but they'll give you certain like codes and color profiles, which are really cool. If for some reason yours does not have it in the box, I've heard that you can email them and ask for the color profiles, mm -hmm. which they'll know exactly what you're talking about. So that's beautiful. Um, and yeah, so we can just click fill entire page. It's going to print out something to look like this and you're pretty much good to go because we already flipped it um, mm -hmm. and you could even flip it here on this side um, page but my favorite is just to go ahead and take care of it because the way I like to look at it is like set it up in Canva, export it, flip it, print it because of the print area I like to worry about my colors making sure it's go print properly get the best color um, when I first open it, I want to make sure it's going to be mirrored. And then, you know, each step is very important for me. So it's super easy. You would print it out. You're going to get it right here. Notice this is a sub paper. So if we look at the overhead, it says a sub. This is our favorite sublimation paper. It just absorbs and kind of holds the ink really well for you, um, which I'm a big fan of. And this file, again, is from Makers Gonna Sublimate. So. Let's talk about prepping your sweatshirt. So here we have our sweatshirt. How we like to prep it, um, you might want to lint roll it. You might want to do anything like that, making sure that you are able to um, position and get any debris off the shirt. So we went ahead and took care of that. And what you'll want to do after that is you're just gonna wanna kinda set this up. I'm gonna try to bring this over. So I feel like we're being a little bit more intimate here. Um, I like to just kind of make sure my sweatshirt is placed inside here and just making sure it's sitting well. Um, making sure it's straight once you get it here is probably my favorite tip. Now there's a few different heating sources. This is a Starcraft uh, clamshell. I personally love it. Mm -hmm. I love my clamshell. Um, it is a little expensive. It is more on the expensive side, but yeah. it's done us. It's For sublimation, yes. I really do like it. Some, instead of having an arm like this, they have a swing away arm, would be helpful, but the way I look at the swing away arms, they're just not, in my opinion, going to last as long. Um, so when I was picking one, this was bought with our own funds. I have been eyeing this, and this was kind of a treat to myself. Like I spent multiple years without one, but when we went all in on sublimation, I was like, I really want a clamshell. And for businesses and things like that, I think it's great. 
I think if you are getting like the cheapest way to get in a sublimation is an eight and a half by 11 printer. And if you already have that large easy press, that's all you need. Don't go out and get a new heat press. Don't go out and do all of that because you can rock it with what you have. Okay, we have our design. We're gonna place it here. You have some time just to make sure this is lined up properly. Um, if you have grabbed a ticket to make a thon, it's March 4th, mark your calendar, be there, um, because we're also sending out swag bags. It's the final few weeks. If you want a swag bag, um, we're giving you a t-shirt uh, ruler. So good. You could use that to place this. And since we are setting this up here on the uh, clamshell, notice we're not using any tape. If I was going to lay my shirt here and position it, I would use heat resistant tape to tape it down, okay? But notice I'm not using that or needing it because I'm positioning it, the design right here. I can see everything really well. And I like to always put my shirts um, about an inch or two down from the top. So that's kind of my tip um, if you want to save on material. So all right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press this down and we're going to press it for, I believe like 60 yes. seconds. I need butcher's paper. 385 totally for 60 forgot. seconds in the bottom. Oh my goodness, our little caddy here, y'all. I love our caddy. Um, this is called butcher's paper. Okay, so if you're- Sherry asked a good question. How do you use the t-shirt ruler? Oh, the t-shirt ruler is amazing. So let me just, talk. you can hand me the whole bag if you want. Yeah, look at this. So grab your Makeathon ticket. You're going to get a swag bag with all sorts of stuff. You're getting the Makers to Learn weeding tools. You're getting the t-shirt ruler and a bunch of other goodies. Um, this is the ruler. So it just helps you line up, find the center, um, and it's really, really simple. So you could, we can go overhead real fast and then we'll hit and press our shirt. So you can see here, you can just line this up and you can see exactly where it is um, positioned. And you can see it's like right there in the center. So super helpful um, to be able to do that. But yeah, I, we use this a lot for heat transfer, not as much for sublimation, but it's great to have. So now that we have this here, we are going to add butcher's paper. So my thing about butcher's paper, some of you may want to put butcher's paper in between the shirt. I don't do that as much, but I always protect my heat plate with butcher's paper. So you just nicely place it there and then we're gonna press down just like that. So we'll give this 60 seconds worth of heat um, at 385 degrees and it's awesome. So let us know what questions you guys have. It could be. Yes, yeah, yeah. We have used this easy, Caesar Easy Color. Okay, so look at this, y'all. If we had not went ahead and got this amazing butcher's paper, Sadie, we're gonna try to show them this. Can you see this overhead where it's like you can see the design? It this right here would have went on our heat plate, yep. Lauren. And it would have transferred over to our next blank. Oh my goodness. So let's say we had done a project smaller than this. All of this ghosting would have ended up on our next project. So butcher's paper is very important. And now we throw this piece away because it, it's gone, it's done. So there we have it. I'm gonna make some room on the craft table to move our shirt over. Um, sublimation is also a very mess-free craft. Like. It is very, very, very mess-free, super simple, and then wow. I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's a beautiful press. It's beautiful. We love it. You have all of this here. You could theoretically press this again onto something. If you were like wanting the best value, you could easily, easily press this again because there is still ink here, but it wouldn't be as vibrant. It wouldn't be as bright as this. Like. These two are super vibrant and they're super awesome. So you wouldn't get this, it would get like a very faded color. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check it out. Now is butcher's paper and parchment paper the same? There is not, um, this is not the same. So butcher's paper will also absorb out any um, moisture in your shirt where parchment paper would not. 
um, and Teflon sheets. Do you still throw the Teflon sheets away? I, no, Teflon so sheets are really Teflon unique. there's Teflon sheets in the drawer, in yes, that large drawer. Yes, 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 So a Teflon sheet is more to protect the fibers of your materials. You can still get transfers onto your Teflon sheet, yeah. and then it, will tra it can transfer over to your next project. Yes. Because so, I have had sublimation ink that has ended up on my Teflon sheet somehow, and it yeah. has transferred onto another project. Yeah, so you can just be mindful and careful if you're wanting to do it the tanner way, butcher's paper, y'all, is my it's my ride or die. Like a roll of this is so affordable, it's so good, and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. So yes, I love this stuff. It's great. Um, and yeah, it's that easy to have your amazing Christmas sweatshirt. You could do this for the whole family. If you're doing matching pajamas, if you want to do a matching pajama set, you can make everyone the sweatshirt and then wear all matching uh, pants from like old navy. That's where I get a lot of our uh, Christmas pajamas. Lauren gets the hers. Uh, uh, where do lands you? in. L lands in. Okay.